Facts admission talk, admissions talk uh, organized by the Faculty of Engineering, the University of Hong Kong. I'm Kelvin Orr, the, the chairman of uh, the Engineering Admission Committee, HKU. Today we have uh, Professor Kevin Sia next to me. He is going to give you uh, a talk uh, on something related to biomedical engineering. So I uh, hope you enjoy the talk today. And after that, we will have a Q&A session. If you have uh, questions or comments or want to share, uh, we can do that uh, after the talk by uh, Professor Sia right here. So, um, so I'll pass the time to you, Professor All right. Sia. All right, thank you very much for the introduction. So thank you for the invitation for the talk. And um, wow, well, first of all, I think um, for those who now joined this uh, you know, admission talk session, I presume that you are interested in biomedical engineering. And I think that all of you should at least appreciate to some degree you know, how BME would impact you know, healthcare or the biomedical science in general. So in this talk, actually, I'm not going to give you, you know, how, uh, give you the idea of how great uh, BME uh, is about, you know, how they actually create all these impacts. But I think it would be more interesting to you, all of you, to introduce you what exactly happens when you study in BME. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is, you know, what, especially from my experience, also from, from the, our students' experience, how they actually gone, how they have gone through uh, their, you know, study lives in the four years of study in our program. So, just see if I can. Let me just, oh, all right, great. So first of all, I think uh, I would basically give you, uh, you know, the following idea. So whenever you actually study in uh, you know, BME, I think in general, that would have you know, three main transformation okay, in the, to the brain. Okay, so first of all, uh, our students typically would experience to see a lot of the unseen uh, you know, materials and knowledge you know, during the four years of study. And second, uh, because of you know, a lot of the diversities that I'm going to introduce to you later on, you would expect a lot of the unexpected experience uh, in your program as well. And more than that, um, let me just make sure I can. Oh, all right, great, thank you very much. So I think the most important part would be you know, how through all this uh, unexpected, uh, you know, an experience, you know, how the students would unlearn what they have learned or what they are learning during this uh, uh, program. Okay, so what are you seeing here? First of all, uh, whenever, whenever you start studying in biomedical engineering program, definitely you would expect to, to you, know, you know, take a lot of courses, you know, do a lot of homeworks, right? But I think more important that we would like the, the, our students to experience or to see is we want to let them see a lot of the unseen, uh, you know, impacts or you know, potentials of BME. So just, I'm sure, as I mentioned in the very beginning of the talk, I think that you have, you know, some, uh, to some degree, some knowledge about how BME would create the impacts in healthcare or in biomedical sciences, right? So, but just take um, the innovation or the technologies developed in our uh, you know, uh, in our program and some examples, what you are seeing here are actually a list of, uh, you know, some of the uh, latest you know, BME technologies developed by our professors and teachers in our program. For example, on the top row, we, what you are seeing here would be, you know, how we can actually use physics, you know, classical mechanics to understand how embryo actually formed from a very, very small entity into, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, adults, animals. And this actually gives us a lot of, uh, you know, useful knowledge in cell biology or what we call the de development mental biologies to understand how human actually grow, okay, and simply using the uh, classical mechanics of mathematics. And in the, in the middle part is, you know, how we can use nanotechnologies, especially how we can turn diamonds into very, very tiny particles to suppress, you know, oral infections. And something that you might not have, you know, imagined before, but this is exactly what um, the technologies right now can provide us. And on the right hand side, what you're seeing here is, you know, how the current electronics, not just the electronic chips that you are seeing in a mobile phone or your laptops, but I mean, these are the electronics that you can wear 
on uh, together with you know your clothing or you know, other you know, wearable devices how they can actually monitor your health conditions and even detect you know any possible disease on an individual individ uh, individuals and many other uh, uh, advancements i'm not going to give you uh, you know all the list here but just to give you an idea combining a lot of you guys who know you know the deep learning or artificial intelligence together with imaging how you know we can actually uh, you know detect cancers in a patient's blood and how we can on the other hand you know develop something much more cost effective for example MRI you know, technologies would be like one of the gold standards in nowadays in you know, the medical imaging technologies and for those who might have some idea you know this is actually the gold standard uh, practiced in, in a lot of the clinicals and the hospitals and uh, they are typically very bulky and very expensive you know, multi-million dollars and very recently uh, one of our professors you know developed some very low cost and effective MRI machines you know, you know 10 times or even 100 times cheaper than uh, the current technology so you can actually see that here, okay, these are some, something that you might not have seen before, even in the news or in the textbook, but this is like this is something going on right now uh, in the biomedical engineering. Of course, I mean, you would ask, okay, see, that's something that's very far away from what the students are actually learning from or in the classroom. So how can we actually prepare ourselves, okay, to get to these levels and even, you know, involved in some of these uh, uh, researches? And in fact, uh, in our program, okay, you can already see from the, all these examples that I just uh, described, you would actually feel that, okay, there are actually quite a number of different disciplines or subject matters that you need to learn. So in our program, especially in the first one or two years, okay, our program was actually designed in a way that the first year would involve uh, you know, all the fundamental courses related to computer programming, mathematics, and different disciplines in engineering, typically you know, electronics and mechanical engineering. And of course, on the other hand, we, the students would also need to learn the fundamentals of you know, cell biology and molecular biology, and also how human actually works. And of course, you know, the fundamental biochemistries. So these are actually the different individual topics and subjects the students in our program would experience to learn in the first two years. And of course, and go all together, we will have also some introductory topics included in some of the courses uh, to introduce how we can integrate you know, all these different subject matters together uh, in biomedical engineering. And then talking about you know, the, um, uh, uh, the, the interdisciplinary learning environments that you already can see here, uh, towards the year three and year four, the, the third year study, and once you have acquired all this foundation knowledge of you know, biomedical sciences and engineering, and what we focus more on, okay, in terms of the students' learning experience and how we can, uh, how the students, okay, can apply these fundamentals in different disciplines in BME. So here I just list out some of the uh, uh, the common uh, examples, you know, ranging from tissue engineering, you know, biomechanics, you know, bioinformatics, as well as uh, biomedical imaging. Now, of course, what you have just seen, okay, is already a lot of different, you know, knowledges and a lot of topics, and you would, you know, even not only you, but even our uh, 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 students would actually feel quite overwhelming okay in the first or one uh, first one to two years because of the fact that it's actually cover a very broad subject matters okay now and of course on the other hand you would expect okay not only to study a lot of different subject matters but you would also expect something that unexpected what are these and these are actually something that we actually value a lot which is the hands-on training or hands-on learning experience because we believe in our program what's more important than uh, you know, learning in a classroom, doing homework is, you know, how you can apply all the theories, how the models that you have learned to the actual, uh, you know, BME practice. So in our program, okay, what, you know, a lot of the students might not expect in the very beginning is that in the year two and year three, 
courses, okay, they actually have a lot of different opportunities, okay, to try their hands and try their hand skills to build their own prototypes, actual prototypes from scratch. And here I give you one particular example, which is a real example from one of the courses called the integrated projects. So what the students actually would need to do is they would need to build a medical device. Now in this particular example, which is actually taken from last semester. So the students were required to develop a device called a pulse oximeter. So this is actually a device that would help measuring the blood oxygen levels, okay, in the individuals. Okay, and the students need to learn, first of all, okay, the human physiologies of, you know, these, you know, blood oxygen uh, in human. And first of all, and second, you know, how the electronics and mechanical prototyping would help them to build the entire device, okay, into a functional pulse oximeter. So it basically took them around 12 to 13 weeks to accomplish the mission. And what you are seeing in this video is actually one of the tests that we did, uh, which is called a drop test to test whether or not, you know, their devices are actually robust enough. So that actually gives the students a very nice and uh, um, uh, uh, very hands-on experience in how they can apply all this, you know, EBME knowledge into, you know, uh, hands-on practice. And not only that, and you have already seen perhaps from the videos, uh, in our program, we do have a pretty diverse uh, uh, or very big, uh, wide diversities in our uh, BME students, you know, formations. And you can see that uh, we are pretty much having a half and half male and female students. And also we are actually having a lot of the international students working together, learning together in our program. So typically more than one third of our class actually uh, coming from a uh, different part of the world. <clears throat> not only that, okay, something perhaps even the current students might not or might have uh, not uh, expected you know, when they actually came to our program is that they actually can learn not only within the BME students and within the same class, but they can actually learn from other programs, other faculties, especially the medical students, the MBBS students, okay? And then what you are seeing here is actually one of the examples and one of the uh, initiatives that we just took uh, last year, actually starting from this academic year, to uh, join, uh, to, to group okay, the MBBS students as well as the M uh, BME students together and work as a group, okay, to uh, work out different solutions for the visually impaired people or the blind people. And we actually have these collaborations with the Department of Ophthalmologies, as well as, you know, a lot of other organizations, for example, what you're seeing here, some of the schools for the visually impaired and also the Hong Kong Society of the Blind, so that the students, not only BME students, but also the medical, medical students working together and understand, first of all, how, for example, uh, the visually impaired people would encounter any difficulties in their daily lives and how we, as a BME students, you know, provide the solutions, okay, uh, or prototypes or any devices can help these uh, people, okay, in, in, uh, to deal with, you know, any challenges or any problems in their daily life experience. So I think this is one of the very meaningful uh, activities that uh, our BME students can actually learn how they can apply their knowledge in the real world, uh, real life examples. And many other opportunities, uh, for example, there's a lot of uh, uh, infrastructures and facilities that we provide to the students uh, to learn outside the classroom, outside the homework. And there's a lot of the, um, the research laboratories and also teaching laboratories uh, setting up here on the main campus as well as the medicine campus so that our students, BME students, can actually have a very diverse uh, experience, hands-on experience uh, in you know, different areas of BME. So this basically would give a very broad coverage and exposure to our BME students. And here are just some of the examples. Now, these are actually the videos taken from some of the laboratories as well as you know, uh, the learning common facilities that our students are basically uh, experiencing every single day. <clears throat> All right, so at last, I think that I would like to share with you, so um, the, the, the third and the, the final uh, transformation that I mentioned to your brain whenever you study here in uh, BME is you know, how we value 
um, this very important philosophy in BME is you know, how the students can unlearn what they are learning and what they have learned. What do I mean here? So there are actually two main uh, ideas. So first of all, BME has been uh, you know, developed for many, many years, and you would actually have seen uh, from the news or from the literatures that you know, a lot of the cool technologies has been evolving from day to day. All right, so what we have been using in the past 10 years might not be already applicable to face uh, some of the uh, ongoing challenges in healthcare or biomedical sciences. So we have to keep ourselves very open-minded in the sense that what we have learned maybe one year ago or two years ago, okay, might not be already applicable to some upcoming challenges in healthcare. So we have to keep on learning out, learning new different uh, skill sets related to you know, BME, okay? So what we are actually looking at here is uh, we try to, our best, okay, to let the students to realize, you know, how broad and how diverse uh, the BME potential could be. So even when they just first came here uh, as a year one, uh, when they haven't got a lot of the background knowledge in BME, but that would be a nice opportunity for them to directly go to the laboratories and then to work on or behind the shadow of some of the research scientists uh, in our BME laboratories in both our main campus as well as in medicine campus. And this is what we call the lab shadowing program specifically for our BME students. So each of the students would have the opportunities to take around three to four weeks in each of the laboratories, okay, to experience what, ex what it takes to do the BME research right now, uh, especially here on the, on the same campus, and they would rotate different labs, okay, throughout the two semesters. So then they would have a very, you know, basic and broad idea, uh, even when they just first came in in the first year, about what BME is about. And many other opportunities I would like to share with you. For example, our faculty has uh, made a tremendous you know, efforts, you know, to provide the hands-on training to all the engineering students on campus. And uh, this is actually uh, one of them, uh, which is uh, the, the innovation wing, uh, which is actually where I'm, where I'm actually standing right now here. Uh, so this is a very nice uh, in, uh, a platform for all the students in engineering uh, faculty, so who are actually aspire to uh, turn their ideas into some real solutions or real prototypes to help, for example, in BME, the patients or the medical scientists to, uh, to, to conduct their research or to um, provide better health care. So this is actually a platform for them, okay, to uh, conduct their um, uh, initiative. So a lot of our BME students actually, actually form what they call the student interest groups, okay, so that they can actually work together uh, as a team in the innovation wing, okay, where they actually provide a lot of supports to our students to turn their ideas into actual products and actual uh, prototypes. And many others uh, opportunities uh, for the interest of time, I'm not going to you know, dip into very deep, but I mean, if you have uh, any questions about further opportunities, let me know after the talk and we can, you know, have, uh, I know, I know, another session of a Q&A. But here, just to give you an idea, uh, outside the classroom, we also provide many other opportunities, for example, internships in industry, especially in the BME industry here in Hong Kong and, you know, in the neighboring regions as well as uh, different you know, public or uh, private hospitals and many other uh, opportunities that students can participate in uh, different uh, com competitions so that you can work together with you know, other students, not only within the faculty of engineering, but many other faculties. And talking about these you know, opportunities, uh, I'm not going to you know, you know, talk every single one of them. I just list out here just to let you know, okay, there are indeed, okay, a lot more opportunities that are uh, beyond your imagination, beyond your expectations. And uh, we actually here in Hong Kong U uh, Engineering provide our students, okay, to uh, you know, broaden the horizons during their study. And perhaps uh, a lot of you would questions and uh, ask okay, what would be the career prospects in uh, BME in general. Okay, indeed, because of the diversity I just mentioned in the very beginning, the prospect is actually very diverse. So again, it's very hard to you know, make a very inclusive uh, uh, highlights uh, in, in a few minutes, but here just to give you a big picture, 
that uh, a lot of our students, actually um, around like one third of our students would, cho uh, would choose to pursue in a higher degree in uh, uh, BMD in either the master degree or PhD degree, both here in Hong Kong as well as overseas. So these are some of the uh, universities, you know, may, you might found some of them are very familiar uh, that uh, our students actually went for you know, further study in BME. And what you are seeing here in this, uh, on this screen is five gentlemen. They are actually our very distinguished alumni graduating from our program. And right now they are the uh, faculty members, uh, you know, very active engaging in the uh, BME research both here in Hong Kong as well as overseas. And many other opportunities uh, in private and uh, uh, public sectors, uh, both in hospitals as well as a lot of different you know, biotech companies, especially in the previous, uh, in, in, the, in the recent years, uh, a lot of the uh, local startups as well as uh, the, the international uh, or multinational you know, uh, medical device companies, they are actually moving to Hong Kong, set up their branches here, especially in the Science Park. Uh, so that's actually creates a lot of you know, job opportunities for our BME graduates, you know, especially in the recent years. And perhaps one, uh, another route that uh, it's getting a little bit more popular than in the recent year is you know, some of our students also you know, aspire to go for you know, another degree for uh, medical uh, doctors. So, I mean, they we actually went to you know, different uh, medical schools here in Hong Kong as well as overseas. So this is actually one of the possible routes. And talking about that, just to give you an idea that we do have in a, a tech collection pathway to our um, you know, MBBS degree. Uh, so for those who are um, you know, doing exceptionally well in academics and then they are aspire very much, you know, being uh, to become the medical doctors in the future. So they can actually opt for this you know, very competitive uh, pathway to MBBS degree. So the idea here is, you know, once you, uh, uh, you have to basically you know, finish this uh, four years of study in the BME degree. So once you have gone through in you know, the several, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know test and, um, and uh, assessments. So uh, only for those who are very, uh, you know, academically excellent and also um, show very passion, very great passions in uh, the medical uh, to become a medical doctors, and they can directly be you know, admitted to uh, the year two of the MBBS degree, and then take you know, four more years of study to complete the MBBS degree. <clears throat> More other uh, prospects, especially in the recent years, uh, a lot of our students, including our teachers and professors, we have uh, um, aspired to translate uh, the technologies or inventions that we developed here on campus and bringing them to um, translational applications in clinical area. So these are some of the startups uh, spin-off uh, from our um, the program here in Hong Kong U. So uh, ranging from you know, medical imaging technologies, tissue engineering technologies, and many others. And in fact, in you know, our um, uh, university at Hong Kong U, we have this uh, innovation entrepreneurship hub called the iDendron. So they actually provide a lot of support to our students, not only engineering students, to all students at Hong Kong U to nurture this you know, entrepreneurship uh, spirits on campus. So this is actually uh, a, one of the main initiatives going on on campus. So I think that's pretty much I would like to share with you today. And uh, for those who are interested in our program, uh, I do encourage you to follow our you know, social media channel, including our IG channel and Facebook, uh, because uh, we constantly update a lot of our update, updated news, uh, as well as uh, teachers news and students' lives and experience on these channels. I mean, if you want to catch up and get to know more about uh, what actually happens when you study at BME, you know, please check out these you know, websites. And thank you very much.